Well, we hope you had a fantastic weekend celebrating American independence and everything else that makes this country great. Filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza, however, worries there's a segment in America driving citizens away from a view of U.S. exceptionalism. He examines this troubling trend in his new film, America. How do you convince a great nation to author its own destruction? You start by telling a new story. Because if you got a business, that, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. What President Obama's really saying is that the wealth and abundance of American life are not earned. They're stolen. Obama didn't create this movement. It created him. Not God bless America. God damn America. Incredible as it may seem, there are people in America who want a world without America. On Friday night, D'Souza took to the Kelly file to explain why he saw this latest project as necessary. When I came to America, I was stunned by the abundance of ordinary life. The rich guys live well everywhere, but I was struck by how good the ordinary fellow has it in America. And then I was also struck by the goodness and idealism of the American people. Uh, even when they fall short, they always want to do better. And then I saw this sort of ferocious leftist critique of America. Over the years, I see this critique metastasize out of the campus, into Hollywood, into the media, uh, and then now I think into the corridors of government. We call it the shaming of America, an attack on America. It's completely wrong-headed. Okay, and Eric, that's exactly how he opens this movie, by piecing together all of these comments by progressives and those on the left who've taken shots at America. And then he proceeds in this movie to rebut all of those accusations. Do you think that's why, according to a new poll, fewer Americans say that America is the greatest nation on earth? Because the left has been apologizing, including our president, for all of the mistakes that she's made? I, I think the reason why we saw that poll, I think the reason why most of America, a lot of Americans now feel it's, it, we're not the, the powerhouse we used to be is because prices have gone up, our, our wages are going down, middle class is getting squeezed. What Dinesh D'Souza has done, though, he's taken a lot of conservative talking points and put them and, and compiled them into a movie, and I think that's fantastic. One of the most interesting, I haven't seen the movie yet, but one of the most interesting clips that I've heard from the movie is when he outlines how President Obama and the Clintons have somehow a connection to uh, Saul Alinsky, and they're really trying to transform, fundamentally transform America into a more socialist government. The conservatives have been saying that for for the better part of six years now, mm -hmm. and then we're going to possibly end up with eight years of Hillary Clinton. Boy, if you have a minute, that this would be the movie. If you're a conservative, mm -hmm. you want to kind of compile it all together and get consinct talking points, unlike this rant right now. Mm -hmm. That would be the place to do it. And Kimberly, it's been been called required. Uh, material for any parent of a child. Make your kids watch this because when they go off to college, they're going to get a very different picture. You know, you hear all these things. We hurt the Indians. We hurt the Native Americans. We did all these things. We wronged the African American community. A lot of apologizing. What Dinesh D'Souza does in this movie, he very factually lays out what actually happened here in a very honest way. A lot of kids should be watching this so they're armed with the facts when they go off to college. Because they're not going to necessarily get it in school, that's for sure. Depending on that, where they go, chances are that they're not going to be equipped with the facts like the way that he lays it out and he makes the case. And makes the case for America, for American exceptionalism. When you think about it, um, think about if the America didn't exist. OK, and we weren't in the picture, we weren't in the game. Then you would have had fascism or communism dominating in Europe. What would we have now going forward if we didn't have America? Probably an America that looks very much like the way that the Obamas and the Clintons want to transform it, which is radically different. When you think about the values, the goals, the dreams, why all these people, millions and millions of people across the world, their big goal, they would love to come to this country for the opportunity for the type of government that we have. But given the course and direction that we're going now, it's going to be a radically different America unless there is a course correction. And that's what people have to think about going forward for midterm elections, going forward in 2016. Mm -hmm. Greg, on a scale of one to ten, how much do you love Dinesh D'Souza? Uh, um, I, you know, I don't, I don't like to use the word love. I don't, I, I'm not big into movies like these. I like movies like Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two. Maybe it's some Die Hard. So I don't, I don't. I guess what I'm saying I don't, I don't go to movies to look for political uh, messages. However, I do understand that in this day and age, it's not a bad thing because so many of the mainstream movies have. Uh, liberal assumptions built into them. So the, you, when, when people go to movies, they get the message without even knowing they're getting the message. So this is kind of like maybe a, the pendulum swinging, but it's not, I, it, you know, you know, 
it's like what Eric said. He took, he's taking what people have said and he's putting it in one place, which is helpful. The argument here, though, is that the other side will say Critic criticizing America actually makes you a better patriot, uh, which I would agree if they actually were critiquing the right things. But often the things that the left uh, critiques are the, are the very things that made this country great, whether it's free markets or the entrepreneurial spirit. These are the things that make America great. But that, those are the things that people like Dyson doesn't like. And in fact, the left, in a sense, always champions things like enforced equality and putative taxation. They're on the wrong side of everything, and they want us to join them, which is why films like this are necessary. Juan, do you think Dinesh being from India gives him a bit more credibility as well? I mean, he came to this country, he's an immigrant of this country, but he has a very different take, and you can see him with Professor uh, Dyson from Georgetown University that mm -hmm. Greg just mentioned. Dyson saying, look, I love America too, it's just from a liberal perspective, we should be able to relentlessly critique her, that's the American spirit, where Dinesh D'Souza says, as Greg points out, yeah, but get your facts straight, and that's why he made this movie, to actually get the facts straight where liberals get them wrong. Well, I, I, t I tell you, I'm very cynical about this movie. I think it's sort of playing directly to the lowest assumptions about conservatives. It's, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to tell conservatives exactly what they want to hear. We're going to give them a movie, and they're going to go running. I just think, you know, I'm a little bit like Greg. You know, I don't go to movies for political sermons. And I notice that in the polls right now, maybe Dinesh D'Souza is a smart guy because the polls say that Republicans are the ones who are losing faith in the country fast. It's still a majority of Republicans who say, you know, the country's great and all that. But if you look at the numbers over the last few years, it's Republicans who are buying off on that. And I think this is, again, just saying to that audience, oh, yeah, this is exactly what we've been telling you. And that business about, oh, you know, you didn't, if you, you didn't build it, America built it. I mean, everybody knows that that was a, a bunch of hooey, and that was said during the campaign. The, the point is, do, the only people that will go to see a movie like this are people that already have heard these things. Right. I give D'Souza credit, Dinesh D'Souza, that's it, yes, said it correctly, for making this film. However, the challenge is to make something for everybody else. You have, to, you have to infect and infest pop culture. You have to get in there and get to the people who haven't heard any of these messages, and that's what the left is really good at doing. The left is very good at going after people on campuses and using humor to get at people. But how does he get it play? I, I, I agree with you, but this is the only way he can go about doing it. Yeah. Because the mainstream well, media is not what, covering this. You've got Fox News or you have independent filmmakers that try and pull it and aggregate it together in the hopes that it's going to yeah. reach the right they're people. Calling him the, they're, they're calling him the Michael Moore yeah. of the right, which I think doesn't do him really any justice because they're trying to say what you're saying greg is okay he's just pigeonholed into this one certain area where if you like him you'll see his movies yeah. if you don't you won't but isn't it important eric that you watch these movies even if you are on the right so you can get educated with the facts if you're at a barbecue and talking to a liberal say like this last weekend good point no, um and i i'm gonna agree with greg here is in other words who's watching who's ever going to watch those movies they're already convinced yeah. you've already sold those people but the point that you made, I'm not sure who made it, who said, make sure your kids watch it. That was me. That's the point. Get your kids out there. We, we have, there's three college kids. I'm walking across, coming into the studio. Three young ladies, college kids, they said, we love the five. I said, where are you from? They're Connecticut. I go, wait a minute. Where are they young, now? You're, <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> you're young, you're from Connecticut, and you're in college, and you love the five. This kind of show where you have open, honest dialogue, maybe that's what they need. Maybe we need some the five um, product placement in, I don't know, some of the leftist movies, I like uh, Sesame Street movies. Mm -hmm. No, no, you know what we need? Those are the most... Oh, no, no, no. You know what we need? Eric, we you need, had to go to Sesame the... Street movies of all the movies. <laughs> the three of us get in trouble with yeah. Sesame Street. Yeah, yeah we can, I, I could play Goofy. Right? <laughs> but no, what we need is the five university. Or Disney. Disney. <laughs> okay, why not, why not, while, you're, um, while you're talking, I want to ask you about this, of course, uh, over the weekend, in addition to Dinesh's uh, movie, the immigration crisis yeah. boiling over about the direction of our country. And uh, Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson was trying to answer on whether or not the administration wants to deport these thousands of illegals that are pouring over the border. Here's his response. Our message to those who come here illegally. Our border is not open to illegal migration. We're looking at options, added flexibility to deal with the children in particular, but in a humanitarian and, fa and fair way. I've well, I'm sorry, I have to, I mean, it sounds like a very careful response. 
are they going to be deported or not? There is a deportation proceeding that is commenced against um, illegal migrants, including children. I'm trying to get an answer to will most of them end up staying in your judgment? I think we need to find more efficient, effective ways to turn this tide around. This is a huge crisis. The mayor of Murrieta, California, you saw that blow up at yeah. the town hall. He came out, he said on Thursday the administration hasn't even called him back. These were Department of Homeland Security buses. He never got the heads up that they would be dumping them in his district. In addition to this soundbite, the administration also came out and said, we don't consider these illegals to be dangerous, yet there's reports of health issues, scabies, head lice, all these concerns swirling around this, and the administration's response is, yeah, we don't know if we're going to send them back. What well, they, they, how could you know? Uh, you know, Andre, they have to What's go the through deportation. What's the policy? Shouldn't they have a policy? Po they have to go through deportation here. Yeah, they should be a policy. I mean, what's going on down there is really curious. I think it's a lot like what's been going on in Clive and Bundy's heart. I mean, you get people coming from all over and, and pretending that they, are, they belong. They're not even members of that community. And now they're trying to st spark a crisis, a nationwide crisis, when you have a refugee crisis, a human tragedy that, taking that's place. That's not fair. That's not fair to call these refugees. What, what, what are they running from? Why are they are they running from some uh, some political war that's breaking out? In their, no, they're running from a crappy economy, and they're trying to get no, a no, better. No, no, it's economy. more than that. Can yes, yes, the economy Jay is part Johnson. of it, but it's also that they're peop that the highest murder rate in the world. It's drug so, trade. It's but that oppression. is not the true definition of, of well, refugee. Be a, let them have a amnesty. deportation. Um, Jay Johnson seven times was asked. Seven times was asked, "What are you going to do with these kids?" Couldn't answer it. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh Ernest over the weekend also couldn't answer it. Today they come on and go, yeah, we're going to send most of them back because they're, they're, they're violating or they're breaking the law. I got news for you. What about the other million or so that come across the border? Mm -hmm. You're going to send them back too? They don't. The Obama administration is so uh, fake on what they're doing with, with, with oh, sending yeah. deportation. They're so fake that they're, 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 they're enforcing even... a 2008 no. George but, Bush law that this... says those children are yeah. entitled to a deportation hearing before they're sent back. That's how fake they are, Eric. We'll send them back then after. What, what's going down at the border is it's President Obama's Berlin Wall moment. This is where he sees the border the way Ronald Reagan saw the Berlin Wall. It's a symbol of oppression. It's not a symbol of protection. It must be destroyed. And, and I'm waiting for him to say, tear down those borders. We have, uh, we have 140 million people who want to come here. Why is it? Because the world pretty much sucks and the United States doesn't. So President Obama's solution is to make our country worse so they will be less likely to come. How clever. This, this is so absurd. We have to treat it with humor. We have to declare a White House happy hour where everybody just descends on the White House and gets drunk on the front lawn and see how they feel about it when you have uninvited guests that show up and you can't do anything about it. Because if you overwhelm the White House, they can't arrest everybody. That's a sit-in. I'll bring the beer. This administration... <laughs> is behind a lot of this. Right. I mean, these are Department of Homeland Security buses busting yeah. these immigrants into this town. This poor mayor has mayhem on his hands. Then the administration says, well, they're not dangerous. Well, how do you know? And even if they're not violent criminals, right. they could be dangerous to the balance sheet of that town. How does that town financially survive with that no, influx? Of they have every right to be upset and to be outraged. And I don't care if they're from that town or not. If you're a U.S. citizen, and you're paying taxes, you can show up wherever you want in this country and protest and let your voice be heard. Not to turn a blind or an unkind eye to children that are coming over. Their parents shouldn't be putting them in danger and putting them with these coyotes. And they should be using the money to start a business or do something or support their family instead of like risking their lives, okay, so here's throwing the, cash here's at it the to deal. these criminals. Here's the deal. This is not a grassroots opposition in that town. This is artificial turf. This I'm, is an astroturf movement by people who are hating on these immigrants. And let me tell you, they're the not, mayor, they're the not mayor, hating on them. That's finish. misstating The mayor it. said his concern was, are these kids going to be treated fairly? Are they going to be treated humanely? You're not hearing that from those protesters. I don't think it's so great and for these kids the to way, be here without their asked, parents. You asked I don't. about the bottom line. That's a federal facility. There's federal dollars pouring into that town, benefiting that yeah. town, so and what? Je federal so jobs. Federal hey, who's dollars from U.S. Who, citizens. That money? What I'm just saying, you asked about, you Come asked on. about, oh, Last is this going to be a burden on the you, town? You keep I saying answer. These poor little kids. Do you, if, if they are coming from these dangerous places, yes. and they're anywhere between six and eighteen. You don't think they're going to be dangerous, too, when they're, no, they're spread they're out? Children. In, in they're no, they're children. They're not drug well, dealers. No, without any parents, without people yeah. here, hoping Hello, that they can oh get their God. parents Hello. here Line. through a loophole. As an expert, children are often more dangerous than adults. Is that, is that right? Oh, my okay. gosh. All right. Greg's got the final word.